In World of Warcraft's new season of Discovery, there are, as the name suggests, discoveries to be made. This one is my favourite so far. In their early adventures, both Alliance and Horde players are made to traverse through open, dry plains. In Westfall, Alliance players can discover something of particular interest, a smoky ruin in the middle of Alexton's Field, north of Moonbrook, and Horde players come across a similar site should they take the main road through the Southern Barrens. At both sites are burned out remains, of both a structure and of several people, a few bottles, a particular corpse, and a note. It reads, not all that burns is lost. Find the twin land, find the place. In rough geography and level ranges, Westfall and the Barrens are twinned, and so should a player of either faction cross over the pond to the other continent and visit their quest's sibling ruins, they'll find a second note, this time secured to a wooden plank. But getting over to these places is much easier said than done, because, well, you're not supposed to be there. To trespass into Westfall, the Horde need to sneak in, and the only reasonable way over there is to charter a ship from Ratchet to Booty Bay to survive the harsh trip north through the jungle, to swim around the western coast, past the Dead Mine Sealed Cove, Stillwell's Orchard, and Westfall's Lighthouse, and then to go inland to the ruins. The Alliance can also take this route in reverse order, though they do have the added option, if they're not in a rush, to take a flight all the way up to Menethil Harbour and then a ship over to Theramore and to wade through Dustwallow Marsh westwards until the terrain rises up into the Barrens, fortunately enough, very close to their destination. Personally though, I took the former route, and as the ship was about to make anchor in Ratchet, I was feared overboard by an undead priest, but after that, I climbed up into the Barrens' western hills to get away from danger, and was gifted with some beautiful views of both the flat, barren barrens to my right, and the tree-covered marshlands sank far down to my left. Okay, back to that plank I was talking about earlier, and the note on it. Mission said they were both making deliveries for the new plague. Looks like simple apothecary accidents to me. Find my cosy spot in the mountains between the Barrens and Desolus, if you want a safe place to talk. From this, we have a clue. We don't know who wrote this letter, or to who, but we do know from their mention of a plague and an apothecary that they're likely undead and that the two caravans we found were carrying very dangerous cargo, perhaps in these bottles. Our next destination is somewhere in quote, the mountains between the Barrens and Desolus, known to everyone else as the uniquely shaped Stone Talon Mountain Zone. It's a deep, narrow valley, extending all of the way from the Barrens in the southeast to its peak in the northwest, with small tributaries branching off to some isolated, unique areas. Its connection to the Barrens makes it a straightforward, if not long, trip from the remains of this tower, and it's quite danger-free, for the Horde at least. Alliance players will have to either brave the guards at the border zone, or take the hidden Talon Deep path, which begins in Ashenvale's forest and ends at Windshear Crag, an eerily quiet area with a blood-red sky, distant fog and nasty spiders, and from there they can get to the valley. Now, as to where this cosy spot is that the note mentioned, we're given no clue. It could be anywhere in this whole mountain range. But yet again, Horde players will likely have a bit of an easier time, as just above Sun Rock Retreat, their local flight point, is a hidden trail up and along. At the end, nestled around even higher elevation, is a campsite. It's made up of a tent, a campfire, and a few other oddities. Most notably, this cat hidden away in the toolbox. But important to this adventure is this collection of pocket litter on a misplaced crate of Alliance medical supplies. We find another note, some tools, of which we can only take one, a sturdy lunchbox, a 12 slot bag, and the supplies needed to rekindle the campfire next to us. Relighting the fire is completely optional, but very beautiful, especially at night. The note, which I probably should have started with, reads the following. Not so bad, eh? Since you're reading this, it means my stash is still there. Take a hundred paces due north, and don't break your ankles going down the steep cliffside. This should be enough to keep you going. This note doesn't seem to be related to the previous ones, but at least this time, the destination is clear. Just north of us is, as expected, the aforementioned cliffside. Thankfully, I've never seen anyone with ankle problems in Azeroth, but an overconfident descent will take you all the way down into the charred vale, likely killing you. So, don't do that. Hidden quite well out of sight is the stash, 
It's an old buried bag. Inside is a choice between three different kinds of weapons, a bow, a rifle, and a load of throwing stars. Aside from those, you'll also find in the bag lots of arrows, shot, and three lots of student fodder. So I guess we're tracking a student now. Student fodder, by the way, is basically a bag of trail mix, but with an amazing effect. Each time you eat one, you'll gain four bars of rested experience, a fifth of a level's worth. And this amount is regardless as to your level, too, so they're great for any point in your leveling adventure where progress to the next level is really starting to drag its feet. But back to the bag and the inevitable note at the bottom. Always like to keep a reserve stash nearby in the off chance I've got to flee in a hurry. The face of this mountainside is so beautiful you might say it was carved from the waterfalls of time. That's the eagle's nest. That's what you're looking for. Well, off we go again. A mountain carved from the waterfalls of time. Though it sounds metaphorical, what are waterfalls of time if not waterfalls? There are a handful of waterfalls about Azeroth, but which one could the note mean? And what does this eagle's nest look like? Well, there's this one not too far away between Ashen Vale and Ashara. It is ridiculously tall, but there's nothing of note down here, and up there's Mount Hyjal, which no one could reasonably expect us to get to. There's one above Northshire, but that one's far too insignificant. Moradon? Can't be bothered to go down there. There's some fjords far up north, but that would just be silly. Unless the mountainside wasn't wrought by water, but by hand. It must be the Stone Wrought Dam, the great marvel of dwarven engineering that keeps half of Loch Medan from spilling into the wetlands far below. The face of the mountain, the eagle's nest, is a face in more than one sense. It all clicks into place. Now all we need to do is get there. This time, Alliance and Horde have swapped places. Whilst the Alliance can simply fly over, as it's firmly within their territory, the Horde will have a lot more travelling to do. Their closest flight point is at Kargath, an outpost at the far end of the Badlands and leagues away from friendly territory. If Horde players can't fly over from here, which is perfectly understandable, the next closest flight point is all the way up in Hammerfall, in the Arathi Highlands, an immense distance away, or failing that, in Taran Mill, just over in the Hillsbrad foothills nearby. Regardless as to which route is taken, it is an awfully long journey. But soon enough, both factions will find themselves at this eagle's nest. The nest is a curious little spot, full of little curios. There are some boxes of what I think is ammunition, a couple of long-barreled rifles with comically large scopes, perhaps pointing to the Thandal span, a named battleground shield, propped up to give some shade maybe, a metal box, a lantern, and a carved figurine of an eagle. Interacting with the scope actually allows you to peek through it, which would provide an amazing view of the wetlands, if not for the constant fog. In the box is an old pipe and a carefully folded letter. From here, with the right tools, you call the shots. Great place to launch a parachute glider. My loyalty to the eagle and fist requires distance in order to serve them best. This barricade has had better days, like the old kingdoms it once defended, but I'll never abandon it. So our next destination is a barricade of ancient kingdoms. This barricade could be metaphorical, perhaps it's a mountain range or a great body of water, or perhaps it's literal. Azeroth has plenty of huge structures. We're at one. There's the wall in the silver pine forest that keeps us out of Gilneas, though that one's quite newly built. The walls protecting Zul'Garub are really old and wally. Or maybe it's a place we may have passed under many times without a second thought. Thoradin's Wall. Thousands of years ago, the human king Thoradin built this wall to keep out the trolls. The author of the letter said it was a place they would never abandon, so let's meet them, as soon as we can find a safe way down from here. Down through the tunnels of Dune Algaz, over the wetlands and across Arathi is the once Great Wall. Most of the wall is still standing strong, which is surprising for its age. In some places though, it has crumbled, the rubble no doubt carried off elsewhere long ago. On its eastern half, propped up next to the breach in the wall, is a unique bit of clutter. Next to some ruins, an old cart and a barrel doesn't really stand out, and so initially I did look past it. But on second glance, they're unmistakably purposefully placed. Clambering up the cart and then the wall's rubble in what I believe is the first time I was ever made to climb something in World of Warcraft is our final destination. Hidden up in what's left of this tower is perhaps the most unique hideaway in Azeroth. 
It's a hideout with all sorts of clutter. There's loads of crates, barrels and bottles, a spare pair of boots that would maybe fit an orc, a fire that seems to only recently have been lit, some nice furniture with an interesting map, weapons and shields of which some seem to have been taken, some readable law books, the kind you'd find in a library. There's what looks like an ancient tapestry with planets and cuneiform text pointing to certain locations, though sadly half of it's missing. There's another cat, a rope to climb leading to a flying machine parked above. There's some more rifles pointing out to either side of the wall. One's ranged in on Dernhold Keep and the other on Northfold Manor. Both, interestingly enough, are Syndicate strongholds. Most important to us though is a bag on a hook. So, I've decided to take my work back underground to stop it falling into the wrong hands. Below the bag is a large roll of canvas with more cuneiform writing on the inside for some reason. Sticking out is a barrel of another rifle and deeper inside is a whole five more student fodder and the grand prize, the cozy sleeping bag. Though it seems incredibly mundane, the sleeping bag is an amazing item. Unfurling it down on the ground and dropping in will give you a two hour buff to experience gain with a 1% increase for every minute slept up to 3%. The best part though is that anyone in your group can join in. Having the whole leveling party settle down for a nap is always a sensible option thanks to this buff, but the sleeping bag's greatest effect is that it regulates the pacing of your adventures. Today, in all aspects of gameplay, efficiency is key. Content is rushed through and communication tends to be spartan, but a three minute rest can change that. It gives an opportunity for players to break down the barriers between them, both socially and physically, and lets everyone have just a bit more fun. It's also great if you need to take a quick piss. Okay, so sleeping bag aside, what is going on here? The hints of a plague in the earliest steps of the quest line don't seem related to our travels after we left Kalimdor, but I'm sure we'll eventually learn something about them from someone. Whoever spent time at the Eagle's Nest at the dam claims to be loyal to a so-called Eagle and Fist. Whether these are the aliases of two individuals, one organization or two individual organizations, I have no idea. The Bronze Age script seen in the hideout is odd, but I'd wager it's all Titanic stuff, perhaps plundered from a place like Ulderman. No one has found any further clues, nor do we know anything about the author, save for them perhaps being a student, but consider me very interested in where this will lead in the future. When the author wrote, quote, to stop it falling into the wrong hands, what were they talking about? An ancient artifact? Their parachute glider, which I hope one day we'll get our hands on? Some kind of weapon? The Ashbringer? Only time will tell. Oh, and by the way, this entire time, we were being watched. In fact, wherever we go in Azeroth, we seem to be being observed. Seen most notably from Thoradin's wall are two secret agents just behind us on the climb up. Wowhead comments claim that these secret agents can actually be found all over the Eastern Kingdoms. After heading over to where they claim to be, I found nothing. So I assumed it was just a story. Until, on an island off of the Swamp of Sorrows to the southeast, in the middle of absolutely nowhere, I saw one. Upon approach, he disappeared in a flash of light, saying only, we've got friends. Something is afoot. Discoveries are still yet to be made, but that's enough for me for today. I'm going to take out my new cozy sleeping bag and get some rest. Take care. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like it. If you like me, please subscribe to the channel and please leave a comment if you have one to make. I also have a Discord server. Here's the link. A big thank you to YouTube members Morian, Silux, Nightseeker, Jonathan Bengtson, Riley, Cornpops871, Schoon, Patrick Manhora, Dark Lord Grimace, Lewis H, Lurend, Sovereign, and Cherish. They all received access to this video 100 hours early. If you'd like to join them, the join button is down below.